So, welcome back. We have been looking at the rate net and we have seen how the rate network is a network which has got two parts. The top part is the alpha network which is used to match working memory elements and the lower part is a beta network which is used to pull together those patterns which constitute a rule essentially. And then we saw a ex small example of rule based system in which there were four rules defining pyramids and wands and domes and cylinders with some color maybe. And uh, let us see how the rated network looks for this set of rules. So, here is the network where we have shown the test to be below which basically means that for example, we are testing the value of that attribute here. The class is the base, the class is the side, the class is the block and so on and as we go down, we look at values of attributes and the test essentially. So, so here for example, we are saying area is greater than 1 and so if the token has a value which is area greater than 1, then it will come down this, this path otherwise it will go down the other path where you have area 1. So, we have only two kinds of tests in two rules. One says that uh, area should be greater than 1 and the other should, should say that the area should be equal to 1. Then we look at the shape, some have shape square, some have shape as circle and so on. So, depending on what the working memory element is, it would traverse down a particular path and then we had the four rules that we talked about. One was the green pyramid rule, one was the wand rule, one was the dome rule and one was the cylinder rule. So, I would urge you to look at this more carefully uh, offline and see that the four rules that we wrote are all captured in this network. If you wanted to use the other notation where the test is on the top, then here you are saying class, what is the class name and you are saying the class name is base, then you, what is the next value which is area, and then, then it is greater than 1 or equal to 1. You can see that the same network, the way of writing it is different. It is a matter of personal choice as to which one do you prefer. Let us say this is our working memory. Uh, so, those of you who are Harry Potter fans, you would recognize some of these characters. So, here we have some block names where we also have data about owners, but our rules for classification do not use that data essentially. That is what we said that patterns in rules may have, may not necessarily have those attributes which are there in the data. So, in the database we are saying that the, there is a block block called one whose owner is Harry, but the rule will not look at the name of the owner essentially. It can be ignored essentially, but let us say this is the knowledge base or this is the working memory element. Then we have this four blocks 1, 2, 3, 4 and we have something some knowledge about the base of these four blocks. As you can see some is a circle, some is a square and so on. Then we have some information about the sides of the of the four blocks. So, some may be curved, some may be plain and so on, some may have an angle. And then we have information about top of two blocks, not all one. So, we do not have a complete knowledge base here, we have some information. So, let us look at the match part. When a working memory element token is inserted into the data net, it traverses the network, travels down the discrimination net guided by the test results at each level and waits for other matching working memory elements to arrive at the appropriate beta node. Remember that beta node collect together different patterns and then they say okay this rule is matching. So, when you say a working memory token is inserted, we had said that there are two kinds of tokens we can insert plus working memory element or minus working memory element. Plus is when the action is make or add a new working memory element, minus would be when you are deleting a new element. So, let us say this is a working memory element that we are putting in the token. It uh, is a base, is a block and the number is 2, the name is 2, the shape is square and the area is 20. So, it goes down this particular path and uh, 
where it has matches everything. So, block name is a variable as you can see here uh, in the rule essentially. But so anything will match that. Uh, area in the working memory element is 20. So, that will also match because it is greater than 1. The shape is a constant, so that will match. This one. So, this is how the token would travel down here. And you can see that once this working memory element is created, it, had, it is looked at only this one time essentially and it will never be looked at again. We have been, we have put it into the network, it has traversed, traveled down and it is sitting, sitting at an appropriate node essentially. The green pyramid rule is waiting for other working memory elements to come and when they come, then it will go into the conflict set. So, what are the other things? We see that it needs three things and they would have to come from these paths which have been shown in red here essentially. If you look at this working memory that we had described then you will see that this is where all these nodes would sit. So, we will assume that the working memory elements they sit in alpha nodes, they do not sit in beta nodes because the working memory elephant element may match different beta nodes. So, we do not want them to traverse there. They sit in the alpha nodes and the beta nodes simply keep a pointer to say that okay, this element has come, this element has come and so on essentially. Now, let us talk about the conflict resolution strategy. So, we have got an idea of what is happening here. We have created the rated network and then we start putting the working memory elements one by one. So, in, in the initial phase, all the knowledge base is put in, in one go. Then it all of them settle down, some rules go into the conflict set one of them is going to be selected from there, it is going to make some changes and it will be put back into the rated network again, that is the process. So, the next question we want to answer is resolve, how do we implement the different conflict resolution strategies that we had spoken about essentially. So, when a positive token is dropped in, it travels down and it may trigger some rules because that may be the last token that some rules are waiting for whose other conditions have already been met essentially. If that happens, put this rule instances in a bucket and they will all have the same recency because you know that is when this working memory element came in. Let us say it triggered rules 3, 4 and 5 and it triggered them at the same time. So, all those rules 3, 4 and 5 will have the same recency, right. So, in this way, you can keep track of recency. So, if you are using the recency uh, strategy, then the moment you put in a working memory element, it traverses and selects some rules. That means, you have to select one of those rules for execution. Of course, you could have a more refined strategy. You may look at what if two rules have the same recency, then what is the strategy you want to look at? That is something you can develop. So, for every rule instance in the conflict set, the sum of the lengths of the path define the specificity. Remember that each path in the discrimination net in the alpha nodes is doing a sequence of tests and specificity measures how many tests you are doing. So, if you just add up the paths, then you would have specificity and you could use that to if you are using the specificity strategy. So, once a rule is selected, so just imagine this rated network, you have put in all the working memory elements, they have traversed down and then certain rules are let us say hanging, you know it is like fruit which hangs from trees essentially. So, if you can think mangoes for example. So, each instance of a rule is hanging from the rated network. Once you remove it and execute it, it is no longer there in the conflict set. So, refractoriness is straightforward to implement, it is automatic. When a negative token is dropped in, it may go and exercise some rule which was matching. So, just, just remember this for example, this ranking algorithm. Supposing you are adding this marks one by one essentially and uh, let us say student A had marks 79 and a rule was matching which says that there is nobody higher than 79 and uh, therefore, it might be ready to fire, but some other rule was selected and that that rule fired and that created a new working memory element with, 
of a student, another student B, let's say, whose marks were greater than 79, let's say 83, and then it would go down. And this token would go down and match the negative pattern of the ranking rule for student A and say that, okay, there is a student who has got marks more than 79, so that rule will have to be removed. This is a slightly more complex process, but I hope you get the idea. I will give you some example networks that we have created uh, as exercises over the years. Uh, and what I would ask you to do is to look at these networks and write the corresponding rules for the tasks that they are doing essentially. So, give them appropriate names. Well, we have given names here, fair child, fair student, fair games, fair Arjuna award winners essentially, you know, they are allowed free travel and stuff. So, students for example, they get concession if they are going home, children have a lower fare and things like that. So, these rules were supposed to capture that. As an exercise, please write these rules in the OPS5 like language that we have. All you have to do is to look at this network and convert it into the four rules that we have for four kinds of fares. Here is another one which talks of loan eligibility. Here we have not given the names. So, there are four rules. Give appropriate names and write them down as rules. So, again this is a small system with four rules. Express them in OPS5 language so that they, this network represents them essentially. Here is another one on geometrical shapes. Earlier we talked about blocks, but now we are talking about uh, uh, two dimensional figures. So, there is a whole list of figures you can see on the right hand side, the triangle, the quadrilateral, the isosceles triangle, uh, the right triangle, the right triangle is a triangle which has a right angle, the rhombus, parallelogram, right isosceles triangle and isosceles triangle which is also a right angle. And you can see that there are many beta nodes here on this graph and you can see that there is a certain amount of uh, 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 more specific descriptions and more general descriptions. So, for example, a triangle is more general than an isosceles triangle. So, you can see a spot out of them there. So, do try to look at this and write the rules for doing that. There are quite a few objects here, quite a few geometrical shapes here. Here is another way of drawing the same diagram. Instead of writing the rule names on the right, we have drawn them in the network itself. So, you can see there are many, many rules. Do look at them. So, a note on inheritance. We have seen that, you know, some things are more general than other things. So, for example, look at the rhombus and look at the square. A figure with four sides and four sides being equal is a rhombus. Then you can say that a rhombus in which the angle is 90 degrees is a square essentially. So, you can see that if you have described a rhombus, then you can describe a square as a specialization of the rhombus which has angle 90 degrees. So, you can inherit the rest of the properties and just add something new and that kind of stuff happens a lot when people build things like taxonomies essentially. We will be looking at a little bit of that. The square is more specific than the rhombus, which in turn is more specific than a quadrilateral. So, default rules have an underlying inheritance hierarchy. So, a penguin is a bird for example. So, whatever properties you will ascribe to a bird, they can be inherited by the penguin. Likewise, whatever you say about a quadrilateral, that will be also inherited by a square essentially. So, inheritance is a very powerful mechanism that we have used and I have already mentioned that when we organize things into object like structures, which we will call as frames, then inheritance will play an important role there. It will lead to compactness of your knowledge basis. So, that some things that for example, on all mammals have two eyes can be represented at a very higher level. You do not have to rep represent it for humans and uh, cats and dogs separately essentially. So, there is some certain advantages there. And we will look at something called description logics. 
which allow you to uh, describe things. So, description logics are also called logics of noun phrases. We will look at that as well. They are used in building ontologies and ontologies have suddenly gained a lot of importance in the last few years because of the fact that there is internet and commerce going on essentially. So, in a description logic basically you would represent this or in an inheritance network you might represent it like this saying that a square is a rhombus, a rhombus is a quadrilateral. So, do look out for that. I want to end a little bit with uh, a different problem which is that of game playing which we study in a different course on search methods uh, and in search methods when we play games like this tic tac toe or chess or go we search over the search tree essentially yes, and this kind of is a is a slide I have taken from that course which shows that how uh, you search that first search, you do that first search moving from left to right and you do cert certain kind of cutoffs called alpha beta cutoffs and so there is an algorithm called alpha beta algorithm. So, that was a search algorithm, but humans do not always play games using search essentially. So, here is a incitement for you to write a program to play the game of tic tac toe also called as cross and knots, it is a knowledge based approach that use rules write rules to play the game instead of you know searching ahead and trying to find the best move. So, humans choose acquired knowledge to play a game rather than systematic look ahead search. For example, the chess opening game or the end game, the programs do not really do search. So, humans very rarely do search and it was in fact said about the game of Go that Go is hard for machines to play because machines use search whereas go players the go masters they use perception which is kind of knowledge essentially so most humans have acquired heuristics for the tic tac toe game or the cross and knots game and you have things you have certain ideas like corner squares are good corner of <coughs> control of center is good or you can create a fork so that opponent can only close one row that there is a strategy to block opponent's row or column or diagonal. So, these are the kind of features that you would use when talking about heuristics for that. So, there is a free column, there is a blocked column, there, there is a diagonal for the cross for example. So, you can write a program to, to play tic tac toe using a set of rules and I would encourage you to write this set of rules. For example, you might simply say that start with a corner or if the opponent has started with a corner then play in such a position. So, that try to enumerate the different rules so that you have a program to which is a rule based program to play the game. So, that is an alternative that you can try out. So, write a set of OPSOI like rules to play tic tac toe. And how would you ensure that the conflict resolution strategy picks the right rule essentially? So, you may have a rule which says now it is time to play in the side, now it is the time to play in this corner, whatever the description that you are using. What conflict resolution strategy would you use essentially? So, that is a small exercise to say that you know when you are solving problems, there are different approaches that you can use. You can use search for example, in game playing, but you can even think of rules for example, at least in simple games like tic tac toe. So, I leave you with that, with that we will end the rule based uh, production systems uh, study uh, and we will come back and move ahead with representation a little bit in logic. So, see you in the next session.